I don't do tricks, what I call tricks. I don't pour. I don't spray. You know, I don't use masking. Uh, and I'm two is tone value, tone value, tone value. In my classes, I'm known as Dr. Dark. Because I'm always saying darker, darker, darker. So, And then the third thing is color. So those, I think, are the important uh, things. When you draw a straight line, I use a T-square, I use a triangle, because I draw straight lines. I don't like a lot of uh, illustration board, crescent illustration board, and this is crescent watercolor board. And it's the heavy weight. It's the heavy weight. Uh, one thing that I've noticed is, is sometimes the, uh, I'll miss that texture. As you can see, I've really drawn this thing out. I've really drawn it out. I need to do it. But not only do I need to do it, is I love to draw. Photo. The first, can you see the photo okay? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the first thing that I saw in this photo was, well, it's really crap tight, isn't it? you know, on each side. So I gave it a little more room on each side. So that kind of opened it up a little bit, gave me a little more breathing air. Then I looked at the sky and I thought, well, that's boring. But that's fine. That thing is not, it's not so stiff and so... Um, so now I'm looking at this and I think, okay, look at that little tiny tree. Well, I have a choice. I have a choice. I can get rid of it when I go over my photos, I look at my photos, and if I see little tiny things and I don't know what they are, they're gone. Out. It drives me insane when I'm teaching. Dried up tube colors in a palette. Drives me crazy. When these colors are all dried up in here and you start a wash, you're gonna hurry. This is drying and you're trying to loosen this up. It can drive me crazy is that we don't use our watercolors wet enough. It can drive me crazy is that we don't use our watercolors wet enough. Or enough color, or enough color. So you'll see tonight, and with this, uh, with this particular illustration board, I, I made myself a little diagram as to what colors I'm gonna use. So, uh, for the different areas in this painting, so. But I always test my colors, I always test my colors. I see too many people mix the color, put it down and say, oh, why did I do that? Well, why didn't you test it before you put it down, you know? Um, so to start with, I'm gonna use, uh, and you'll notice that all of, the, all of these colors are nice and wet and juicy, so when I carry them around, I have to make sure to keep them flat because they all run around, so. Uh, and I use, uh, I use a lot of paint, I use a lot of paint. So I'm gonna use um, ultramarine blue and some cerulean blue. You'll notice, I was always taught by this uh, Irving Shapiro that this is how your brush should work. You should fill your brush full. And you know, you, you can, can you see my palette? No. No? Hmm. If, if we see the palette, yeah. then we'll see your painting smaller. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, it's really, really wet. And at the break, you can look at it. And I was always taught that you know you have enough water and enough paint in your brush. If you go like that, it comes off. Then you know you've got plenty of paint. Yes, there is times where you dry brush. Yeah, absolutely. But let's get this thing started, and I'm, I'm just going to go for it. Let's just see what's going to happen here. So I'm going to use some cerulean blue, and I'm going to use ultramarine blue. And I hope you can see. Do you see how you see how wet this is? Yeah. Huh? I want this just absolutely soaking wet. And and just because I'm doing a sky doesn't mean that I have to, uh, you know, paint it like a wall. Right? Do, do you always paint flat, or is the board sometimes elevated? Well, yeah. Sometimes it's up a little bit more. Okay. But I thought, I thought for tonight maybe I should keep it so it's not quite. 
you know, maybe some of these colors aren't going to be perfect, but you know what? I just really want to show you, I just want to show you a method, that's all. Now because that's so wet, look at what I can come right back in here, see? Yeah, I can, and I'm not even working, I didn't wet this board to start with. I don't like wet into wet, I can't control it. <laughs> so, I very seldom do wet into wet, but anyway, that's just me. So let's just get this, I just want to get this covered and see. What is that? This is stuff. Yeah, let's try some of that stuff. Uh, You know, it, I might put one coat on, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I might live with it. I might have to go, maybe you can tell by the way I'm putting, see how I put the color down, how wet that is? You know, it's watercolor, and I think that's what, I think that's what makes your watercolor look fresh, is to have plenty of water in it. over it again who knows but yeah, so that's still that's still a little bit wet because I've gotten it wet enough so do you use a dryer to dry it and touch it you know if it was drier then I couldn't have done that because uh, it would have made a mark so I, what I'll do is I'll start over here on these trees There is a color I hardly ever use, it's quin gold, but I thought I'd try it tonight. Mm -hmm. It's still wet, so you can see I get a really soft... Uh, sometimes I, I mix my greens, other times I'll use a sap green or an olive green, and then I doctor it with something, see? Get a little red in it, so it's not so uh, so it's not so unreal green. When when I when I work with uh, my acrylics, this is how I start an opaque acrylic painting. I start it the same way. I really wash it in, and then I then I gradually make it more uh, opaque. And acrylics aren't that, to me, are not that uh, opaque anyway. <coughs> My palette's really simple. I don't, I don't have that many colors. I don't use any stalo colors, and I can't tell you why. I don't know. I just. I don't know, I'm too old to try them, I don't know. They're just, to me, they're a little bit bright, and I've, I, I probably am so used to the palette that I use that uh, a lot of times I don't introduce. Uh, okay. So there, see, that can, you know, I can get a really soft, if you want to get a soft with this, uh, with this kind of paper. With this to get drier, yeah. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit about tone value. See, this is gonna this trim is gonna be white. So so why not get a nice dark next to it? Okay. And I think when you get these. I, I see so many paintings that are really nice, uh, but they're not done. 
because of lack of tone value. They're very flat. When I look at a painting that doesn't have a lot of tone value, it's like writing a song with one note, bing, 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 bing. It's very boring, so. Uh, but again, you can see how uh, wet I can keep this uh, illustration board. When you use acrylics to do this, would mm -hmm. you thin them with water or medium? And about how many? You know, products? I don't. I don't use. Uh, I don't use a lot of mediums, and when I'm working with acrylics, use water. Just water. The only time is I use a glazing medium. So if I paint an area and I want to change the color a little bit, then I'll put glazing medium in it, and then I'll glaze over the top. And a lot of times I don't have to repaint all the detail and everything. I've just changed the color a little bit. If I paint on canvas with acrylics though, if I thin acrylics down to a water consistency like this, it won't stick on canvas. It won't stick. So I do have to use, uh, I, I do have to use that uh, glazing medium. I think what happens is that uh, a lot of the stickum comes out of the acrylic when you water it way, way down. But, but that's not a problem with watercolor paper, and it's not a problem with this watercolor board either. It just seems to be on canvas. So it must be the gesso that... Uh... Okay, thank you. Do you work more in watercolor or in acrylics? Actually, I work more in acrylics. Um, you know, as I said, you know, I started my career, you know, using gouache, and then when acrylics hit the market, um, I didn't like them at all. They were kind of slippery and slimy, and so what I would do to satisfy the client is I would take gouache and put matte medium in it and make my own acrylics, and they worked the same way, but it... But then I found Goldens, I found the Goldens, and they, I really do like the Golden acrylics. I think they work just great, so. Uh, and now I found another, uh, and they're from Australia, in their Atelier Interact. And uh, nobody sells them here in town, so you have to get them on the internet, or Cheap Joe's, or, or one of those. Acrylics dry from the outside in, and these from Australia drive from the inside out. So you can reconstitute them. It's amazing, it's amazing. Even when they're bone dry, there's a, a spray stuff uh, that you can just spritz on it, opens them back up again, so. And I think it's a little, it has a little softer look than the, the regular acrylics. But, but no, I do, I have to admit, I do work more um, with acrylic. Australian acrylics. Atelier? Like Atelier. 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 I like to, well as you see I changed the color up a little bit there, but I like to kind of change the color up a little bit as I go. I don't just make one long color. So I don't, I don't like to do wet into wet, but um, this is my version of wet into wet. It kind of looks the same. Uh, so I just touch the edge of whatever color I put down and it just, it just changes it just a little bit. But I think it makes it uh, kind of interesting. So just for the heck of it, I'll put a little blue next to this, right? See that, how that works? Okay. There, so I think that gives a little bit of life one. So I do that a lot, I do that a lot. One of the best ways uh, to make gray is either burnt sienna or or uh, burnt umber and ultramarine blue. Really makes a nice gray.
and see how see how nice that works when you have enough water and you have enough paint and to get it. And I still say it makes the color look really nice and clean. It's this um, uh, silver black velvet, and it's uh, number 16. But look at, you know, the point on these things is amazing. It really is. So. How long have you had your brushes? Oh. Would you believe I got some brushes that I had in art school? I take care of my brushes. I really clean them. I had those, and they wore out on me. Yeah, I, um, you know, uh, even with watercolor, you should wash your brushes with soap and water once in a while. You, you really, seriously, you really should. And of course, with acrylics, you know, and so people will say, well, oh, you're not going to use your watercolor brush on an acrylic painting. Yeah, why not? Clean it. Not a problem. I've used this brush on, on with acrylics. I haven't ruined it. It's just fine, but I take care of it and clean it. One of the things that I like to uh, uh, to, to clean a brush is that uh, um, um, it's it's a it's a pink soap. You guys ever seen that pink soap? Speedball pink soap. I think it works really nice. Talk about Murphy's soap. No, no, I'm not. No, it's, it's a speedball. And it's pink, <laughs> like it says, pink uh, speedball. I don't know if you noticed there, I did soften that edge, see, so I can soften the edge when, I, when I'm using this. Uh, And just like watercolor, you know, it dries lighter. It dries lighter. Acrylics dry darker, and um, gouache dries uh, darker. <coughs> I'm just I'm going to go ahead and, and I think it's dry. Yeah, it's dry enough. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to put the shadow in here because I want to show you how I would use my ruler. I don't just go. I can't go. Uh, so. Uh, and you notice, do you see, do you see, uh, well, you can't see the palette. Look, do you see my palette? See how wet it is? Do you see the amount of paint that I'm using? And look what I'm doing. I'm kind of mixing a lot of same color over the same color. And I was taught a long time ago that sometimes you get these colors kind of all mixed together and it kind of unifies your painting a little bit, so. Now, my instructor in Chicago, he used a butcher's tray because, you know, it has that that little thing where, you know, the water will kind of settle around the edge and... Okay, we're going to put that shadow. I remember Weigert. Huh? Weigert. He would put his... Weigert, Weigert, I think his name is. Yeah. He would put his pellet up just slightly, and then all that water would run down to the edge. Mm -hmm. And he would use all that. Yeah. As his grave. Okay. It's really neat. Yeah. So, you know, this by far is not going to be, uh, you know, just for giggles. Here's, I've got white, I've got, I've got gouache here. Now let's say I wanted to put a, uh, huh. How dirty that is. <laughs> now maybe I can do it. Yeah, see? I can go over that. 